So now that we're on the subject of these car fires and you have those images fresh in your mind of the burn patterns and the rust patterns, those are the more famous ones that we went over yesterday. Here is some of the less famous ones from four months ago in Vermont, Johnson, Vermont. This is from a YouTube page called TC802. I'll put a link in the description to this particular video right here that I've already got some screenshots pulled from that we're going to go over and show that it's definitely directed energy weapons. And you'll hear him saying that he thinks it's people driving in on the interstate and how they're getting in and out. And even like my stepdad, still saying things like, I think this is BLM and Antifa starting fires. It was the same night that they burnt the cars, Saturday, they burnt 12 other vehicles in Essex, which is 20 minutes from here, and I'm telling you, I know, they come right up Route 15, and uh, this is the most damage that they've done so far, but that night that they did the stuff out here, so uh, I'm telling you guys here, So, uh, telling you guys, beware, they're going to start doing this. This is just to scare the people. Let's see if I can get this to go here. So, I'm going to show you close-ups of what he's showing you here that I took from his video. Maybe I went to the original from the news broadcast. I just found out about this today. But he had been reporting car fires in his area for quite a while. Clue that it's been happening up here in Johnson too. Otherwise, they would have said something about it on the news. Look at that! Wow! Wow! So this is only four months ago. Yeah. In Vermont. What about all the people that the, the, the thirteen people that lost their cars in Johnson, in Morrisville? And you see the rust already okay. there. I'm going to show you the close-ups here in just a second. But I wanted you to hear him talking wow. about how he thinks it's people doing it. And I'm going to show you how it's directed energy weapons doing it. So this is a screenshot from that carport fire. And I want you to notice the similarity between the way this burn line runs right there between white and gray. Similarly here, I'm about to show you a tailgate that looks exactly like the tailgate on a truck that we saw yesterday. So here on this tailgate, this corner right here where you can see there's actually an unburned strip about an inch wide, vertical and horizontal right there. And it burned a lot more on the inside of the tailgate where it's black over here than right here or around here. If you put it in a microwave, it might burn like that, but no way a fire would be that discriminatory to burn this hot on the tailgate and nothing here and leave a one inch strip around the edge. That shows you that it's electricity. Only if you put a tailgate in a microwave might it come out looking burnt like that. And from what I understand, these vehicles were uh, uh, a couple hundred feet away from the main carport that was on fire, yet they had their plastic melted out. You can see the plastic melted up here on his, on his uh, mirror and here on the light. But I wanted to show you that tailgate because it looks exactly like a tailgate in the video I did yesterday from Spain or Greece or Portugal or wherever it was where it was bright orange on the tailgate compared to just the other side of the brake line. And there's no way a fire would leave that kind of a burn signature. Here again, the difference between orange and white, just on the other side of a brake line on the manufacturer of the car. Mirroring this burn line over here, orange on this side, white right here. They both have the center spot in the middle where it burns maybe less or more, but the rust, this is all the electrolysis burn patterns. The rust, highly rusted. We've seen that one. 
So you can see it's melted the Kia plastic emblem here, plastic there, plastic there. But if you look a little closer at the discoloration, you can see this is discolored to a very dark with a strip right along the edge of unburned on the top of the trunk lid and around the Kia logo, unburned around the Kia logo and a strip of unburned that runs along the top and it's unburned on the corner, just the other side of this brake line. It's unburned on that corner compared to right there. And it's unburned on this corner compared to right there, just the other side of the brake line, this brake line. Fire don't do that. And if you look closely, you'll notice it's basically an unburned strip right along the top. It stops right before the top. Notice the rust. Fire doesn't do that. Or that. Green rust. This is to the point where like your battery terminals get corroded because of the electricity running through that lead. The rust already eating through the metal and pitting it out, it looks like. It's getting pitted. And here we have cars from the Christmas Day Nashville explosion with the same rust burn pattern. And the engine block got hit the hardest on the explosion, which means the energy came from these engine blocks. You'll notice that in one moment. In these images, it's hard to tell what's the front and what's the back of the car, but I can tell you that's the front because that took the most damage and is pretty much missing. Likewise on this one. The energy draws toward the densest, hardest part. And that's why it took out the engine block of both of these cars. And the rest of the car sustained far less damage compared to right there. And the rest of this car sustained far less damage compared to right there. A little blurry, but that's what it was. And the trees are still standing, yet the cars are completely demolished. There's even a tree right here between these two cars. That car right there and that car right there. There's a tree sticking up right here. Right next to how demolished that engine block is and that engine block is. There's a tree standing right there. Just to keep this gravy going, gravy waits for no man, I noticed yesterday this side of my mailbox post is brown compared to this side and this side. I'll turn it so that this side's facing the sun because we're so ghetto fabulous here. We can we can roll like that. And we'll even turn to the fourth side for you. You can see the difference here between the sides, right? These two are unburned. Yep, there we go. This one's burned. You see the difference? And this is on the same side, the south facing side, as when you go down the road and take a left 
all the poles are burnt on that side. As you go down the street, that way you look this direction and all the poles are burnt on the south facing side. Because the sun rises in the east and sets in the west and is constantly on the south side. That's why that telephone pole is burnt. I have a video showing this tree that is now dead. Started out only brown on the sun facing side. I have another video where it shows a place where I stopped and filmed four or five trees very similar to that but about this tall and all of them were only burned on the sun facing side so this begs the question is it coming from the sun or coming up through the ground that's a better way to show you so you can see all the sides are very, are very white except for that sun facing side only the sun facing side is that brown color and it's still white up here actually that's paint but the rest of it is raw wood and you can see what I'm saying. It's much browner on the south facing side, just like all the telephone poles, just like that tree was. And on this one, it pretty much goes straight down. Just like the pole inside my house that's burnt on one side, it's perfectly aligned with the angle of the manufacturer's angle of the wood. On the other side, it overlaps just a little bit because the sun isn't coming from direct this way, it's coming from this angle right here. So it hits that edge and makes a shadow off that edge, but it hits this edge and comes around and overlaps a little bit. But it's always pointing toward the street and therefore that's the south facing side. But I want to show you how cool the small plasma sticks can be. Because Tiger Doug got plasma on a stick. You can see how this one does the curly cue right there. I'm going to have a wet plasma contest right here in just a second. I'm going to take these sticks that I've cleaned. Add water because once they're wet that's approximately what they look like. Once you've lacquered them up. But you can see how you can find the sticks that have the curly cues and the curviness. And that's just a small stick. Oh, till I go and break it. But anyway, see how it's got that corkscrew in it? And the burn line follows the corkscrew. You can find pretty small sticks that have pretty impressive stuff in them. Gotta hurry and take the video while it's wet, it dries so quickly. This one's got a pretty cool spiral in it.
All right, we'll just look at them here real quick until I get them done, because I'm just messing them up. Yeah, see the spiral? Swing on the spiral. That's some tool music. Okay, I'm gonna just hurry up and finish this off because I got more gravy to get to. Way more gravy. So yeah, but just small sticks like this, next time you go out, get you a stick that's got some cool coolness to it. Big hats off to Tiger Doug, who has gotten himself put on a list for sure with this stunt that he pulled where he found plasma fire in Muskoka, Ontario. Plasma. That was weak. Try it again. Plasma fire found in Muskoka. There you go. The stick was collected by my wife at a location about 40 minutes from our house. We won't hold that against you. I was not there. Um, but I've talked to her about this stuff and she was on a hike with some friends and saw a bunch of trees that looked odd and burnt. And she brought this home. And I've only got a few pictures of the trees um, which I will post in another video. That's what it looks like. It looks like the same stuff Jeff is seeing. Jeff Snyder. This is a stick I just threw into a regular campfire to compare. So the top stick there is from a regular fire. And it does look more blended. Whereas this has just got that start-stop from these um, underground electrical currents. That's the working theory right now. I'm going to follow this up with another video. Um, talk to you later. Bye. I'll put both in the description. But right now I want to talk about another one of Tiger Doug's contributions. Right down there. The Horns of Authority. That he contributed to a previous version of this video that I did. The most recent was titled Horned Moses Mandela Effect. But about a year ago, I did one called Who's the Devil Worshipper Now? Horn Man Bad. Is Noah M Moses? Is Noah or Moses a Baphomet? And from the Tiger Doug resource reference pool, I gleaned this about the horns of Moses. And Jonathan McTames goes over the alphabetical origin of the letter A and how it has to do with horns. And the horns of authority. Moses donning the horns of authority. And James True even has a uh, episode in here. Talking about how Noah might be a Baphomet. Like a hermaphrodite. Some weird stuff, man. And then 21 Pilots, Chlorine, the music video. Where they got a little horned god they seem to be highlighting and showcasing in their video. But the reason I want to go back over this is because a friend of mine, clear back when I did the first one called Who's the Devil Worshipper Now, Horn Man Bad, she didn't tell me that she had a statue that she filed the horns off of. Now I want you to picture this. Her old man and one of his buddies having a beer in the kitchen and she's over there filing the horns off for Moses and he's like, now what'd you say she's doing, man? Oh, she she's filing the horns off that statue over there. Uh-huh. Why? Because she thinks we're in like a different timeline reality and that Moses never had horns and that her mom used to have that statue for a few years before she got it from her mom and it never had horns before. See, a friend of mine, Laura, she's like my my main sponsor of the show. She sponsored the whole JeffSnyder2.com website. 
And by the way, I took your package and tried to mail it, and it's too big. I'm going to have to unpack it. And it's got like five pieces in there. I'm going to have to pack them individually. And she had, her name's Laura, and she had plenty to say on the first go-round where I made this one. Showed you that... This. Weak. Try it again. This is Moses. The one who came down from the mountain after communing with God and delivered us the Ten Commandments that the Bible is based upon. And in these, it looks like his horns are made out of light. And that uh, is uh, that will be referenced in the links in the description. On this one, you can see that he's the one holding the staff right there, and he's got the horns that are looking like light. Likewise here, light that looks like horns. Either way, he was definitely depicted with horns. And you can get this statue for only $500 right now if you'd like. Now, I don't know if she had the $500 statue that looked like that. But Moses had horns. The link in the description. And when I did this first video about Moses having horns, she had plenty to say in the comments section, but she never told me. She had her own statue that she filed the horns off of. So I'm outing her. I'm outing her right out of the right out of the Mandela effect closet. Cause that's some real stuff when you're talking about you got a statue that you filed the horns off of and that you've known this statue. It's been familiar to you. Your mom had it for years before you inherited it. And that it never had horns and she filed them off in 2017. So I'm outing you, Laura. <laughs> And I wanted to revisit this issue because this is a huge Mandela Effect issue. And it is the Mandela Effect of the Bible that convinces me the most. Because those people focus so much on remembering those scripture like it was the meaning of life. And it would determine whether or not they got into heaven. That's how much they focused on memorizing those scriptures. So when they turn to one of those pages and say, I remember it differently, it's different than a, a dash on Kit Kat or whether or not they said this or that in a line of a movie. You didn't pay close, of, close enough attention to those movies and those wrappers of those candy bars. Like your life depended on it the way the people who memorized the Bible did. And so when this hits them, it was the eternal unchanging word of God that's changing right before their eyes. And they memorized it. And now it's changing. That's part of the whole deal. So any of y'all newbies from Vanessa's channel, go ahead and get with Laura. She needs a support group for the Mandela Affected. Last but definitely not least, I have another video I'm about to upload recorded onto my phone with similar streaks to these right here. You can see they're lined up, four of them in a row right there. Taken in the same place, right out in front of my house. And I mention this specific video because what I'm seeing over the sky in my house yesterday is so similar that I compared it to these and said, we just don't have the four puff balls at the front. So I'm going to go over that video now. That is the thumbnail, which comes from exactly halfway into the 20 minute video, 10 minutes in. And you can see them change from three to four to even five different puff balls at one point. The only problem is I recorded it in sepia tone. But if I can get it to cooperate here, you can see on the bottom it, that you can run this basically in time lapse and watch them go from three to four to five of these different little puff balls. And at the beginning of the video, they're not all lined up, but you can still see the four separate ones. Do you believe in dragons? Yeah, yeah, we believe in your dragons. And that's your dragon. See how there's like a head on this one? Claudia, she would surely say that these are uh... Stellar cores. What does she call them? 
Hey, let me help you out. There's Stellar Course. Stellar Course. There you go. Streaking through the sky. You see the heads on the end here? One, two, three, four. And of course, I film it in sepia tone, but this is definitely and then you got some smaller lines something going, going on in those. Here you can see they've separated into uh, maybe even five. Definitely one here and one here, and then one, two, three here. There's plenty of points where it looks like they're four, and now I'll show you where there are three different puffballs. They've merged into three. At this point, they've expanded to about five. Here you can see they've turned into three. And I caught some going over my house today, but you can't see the puffball in front, just the streak going behind them. So that's the reason I wanted to go back over these again with you today. When I mention this video in the one while I'm recording it over my house because they look so similar, I'll leave the link to this in the description as well of this one and the next. Here's a good spot where you can see they've separated into five. One, two, three, four, five. And that is at 5 minutes 30 seconds. They most deaf are moving that direction. Most deaf. So I think when I first started filming, I was like over here. Yeah, 5 minutes and they ago. They're smaller too. They're and, much thicker now. And they weren't lined up with each other. 5 minutes 30 filming. seconds into the film, they're all lined up. At first, they're, they're not. Thinner and more separated. You can see their trails right there. You can see the main globs are right over there. Look at the stack of them. Stack of globs. It's a glob stack. Snowman. One, two, three, four, five. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Yeah, one up here. <laughs> Space Those Force in action cool. right there. You can't deny that. If you can, you got problems. Streaking along that direction. Woo, woo. It's probably a good thing I recorded it in sepia tone, or I'd be trying to push this video over the top of the algorithms, trying to get everyone to see Space Force in action. But it's a good thing it was in sepia tone. Maybe it's God's army. Yeah, it could be God's army. But anyway, I got another one of these I'm going to upload today. Y'all ought to check this one out. It's in the description. Sepia tone or not, yeah, that's pretty dope. In formation there. Formation is right. They'd be three deep. They're, uh, those middle three are turning into one now. And they'll turn into a glob of three. Or three globs. So at different points during this video, at first they're not all in alignment, and then they line up. And at any given time, sometimes there's three of them. Sometimes there's four. Sometimes there's five. As soon as we go back, I'll bet they're down to three. And a minute ago, it was at four or five or whatever it was. But there's definitely something shifty going on up in those clouds. You have to try to not see it. You don't have to squint your eyes to try to see it. Just like on those airborne aircraft, Im the airborne aircraft carrier images, now it's pretty much gone into four. One, two, three, four. Just like on those airborne aircraft I'll carrier images. Started, so we got same reference point of that you have to try to not see it. There we go. Whether they're stellar cores. Now or they've merged into four globs. I think at one time they were five or six. Yeah, we, can, we dude behind the camera counted out loud. One, two, three, four, five a minute ago. Now they're four. And I noticed this while I was recording. You can totally tell something weird is going on there, man. It's like Space Force or something. But they were doing drag races over my house today or yesterday. You just couldn't see the, the glob at the end. But they were leaving the same trails. I'm sure. No. And if they do, they probably look the other way or just think it's clouds. Oh, they see it. Like I was saying, they don't know they saw it, but they saw it, and it affected their behavior. Just like David Blaine in his card trick, where he slip, slips in a single frame, and it affects the imp, the behavior of the person who chose the eight of spades, thinking it was their own choice. That's the that is the true trick behind David Blaine's card trick, is that he made you think that you chose it. And then he pulls it out of the deck and shows you and your jaw See, drops. The tails are all kind of separated. There's like 
space in between each And when one. you superimpose that trick space onto here, politicians, here, getting the people left. to think they chose because you slipped in an overhead, they're seeing this. Everyone else is seeing this. And it is affecting their behavior in such a way they won't even know Space Force, that man. they'll think that they chose something when it was given to them. Right, I'm sorry. Uh, still a course. Still a course. So every time people look right. up and see this, just like that eight of spades that was slipped into their subconscious, and they didn't even know they saw it. I'll quit trying to talk over myself. Just like the eight of spades that David Blaine slips in with a single frame on the card trick and then says he read your mind when he pulls that eight of spades up from the deck and your jaw drops because he flashed them all in front of you and said, pick a card. And subliminally, he slipped that into your mind. He didn't read your mind. He inserted something into your mind and you didn't even realize he did it. And then when he pulled it back out and showed you, you were amazed and thought he read your mind. The amazing part is that he got you to do something and think you chose the eight of spades. You didn't choose the eight of spades. You thought you chose the eight of spades. It was given to you to choose. And because you thought you chose it, no one knew what you were thinking when you chose that, that he must have read your mind. So when they see it, like Tyler Durden said, they don't know they saw it, but they saw it. When they see all this, they don't know they saw it, but they saw it. And it is affecting their behavior in ways that they won't even know it affected their behavior. Just like the person who doesn't know their effect, their behavior was influenced by him flashing that eight so quickly. You could only see it for a split second. So those normies that drive by, stellar cores, man. they see the stellar cores. They see everything else in the Boy, sky that stellar. you and I see. They have to drive themselves further into denial in order to not see it. Yeah, that's my Uber back to Zorgan.